We are in backup exec 20.1, and let's go ahead and add storage to our new backup exec installation. So we'll click on storage at the top, and we'll click on configure storage. You see, we also have the option to configure cloud storage as well, if you are linked to one of the cloud storage providers, which we'll take a look at in just a second. So we also have the cloud storage option here, as well as with the icon at the top. But we're going to choose disk-based storage. Uh, we no longer are using tape storage. That's sort of in the past, but it's still as an option as you see here. You also have the option for network storage, such as a NAS or storage connected to a Linux server. And then you've got storage pools, which we'll talk about in upcoming videos. So let's go ahead and click on disk-based storage. We're not doing deduplication at this time, and we're not importing a legacy backup folder. So let's go ahead and leave the default name, and we'll leave the default uh, option that it chose, which is our 32 gigabyte hard drive. We click next. And this is the option to how many, how many uh, jobs you can have running at the same time. Two is a pretty good one. If you do more than two, you better have a pretty beefy setup. Otherwise, things will really slow down. Go ahead and click next and finish. Click OK. All right. So now it says it's configuring our storage. If we click on File Explorer and we go to our drive, you can see that the E drive is now missing. So what it did in previous versions was it allowed you to keep your drive letter and you could go and double click on the drive. But on this version of Backup Exec, it causes the drive to just disappear. So the only way you can even tell that it's there in Windows anyway is to go into Server Manager, go to Computer Management, and then click on Storage, Disk Management, and now you see 32 gig uh, drive volume partition. This used to say it was the E drive. So let's go ahead and close that. And this is a very similar thing that Microsoft Windows Backup uh, Server, the built-in backup program, does as well. Once it takes a drive, it makes it its, its own, which is a new thing for Backup Exec. All right, so our storage is online, which is great. And we can see that it's mostly free, 32 gigs, and we only have used 80 megs. And now when you hover over the storage, you can actually see uh, you know, some more information about what all these different colors mean. So let's go ahead and double click on the storage. We can see that the path no longer has a drive letter like it used to. It now has a volume number instead. Uh, the connection type is local. And we've got our auto detect settings enabled. Uh, sometimes if you have trouble with your drive showing up as offline, change that to disabled. And then all you have to do is just tell the, the server that it's online and you're more likely to stay online. If you don't have those problems, go ahead and just leave it to auto detect enabled. Uh, concurrent write sessions right now is set to one. So even though earlier we talked about having two jobs running at the same time, it's actually going to only run one at the same time. So if you want, you can make that uh, more. Right now I have it set now to two. And again, I wouldn't do any more than that, especially if you're not using a large bank of hard drives, such as a SAN. If you have one of those, then you can definitely go four or five or even more. We have a maximum file size of 50 gigabytes. Uh, that's fine if you want. You can uh, make things run a little faster if you go with 25. But then again, your results may vary based on the type of storage you're using. So it's not a bad idea to just go ahead, do it at 50, run a job, come back in, change it to 25 or even 10 gigabytes, and see if that job runs faster or slower. So depending on the type of storage you use, you might see a difference. Now, the other area of concern is you want to look at the low disk space warnings. So you can see that you're going to see a low disk space warning of 5%, 15 is uh, a regular warning, not critical, and then just regular low space is going to be at 25%. Sometimes these errors can become, or these warnings can become kind of annoying, so you can certainly change those so they uh, don't happen quite as often. It's certainly up to you. Another thing I like to change is I like to go up to Configuration Settings and go to Backup Exec Settings. And I like to go to the overwrite area under storage. You click on storage. So you can see right here, what's going to happen is the media overwrite protection level is set to partial. So what's going to happen is by default, it's going to prompt you before it overwrites any old data. And that could be a real problem because if it runs out in the middle of a backup job and you don't realize it, then it's not going to run the backup for that night. So I like to change it to none 
and I like to have no prompt happen. And although some people are worried about overriding data that you uh, may want to save, as long as you plan it correctly, then that won't happen. And that basically means you need to check on a fairly regular basis how much hard drive space is available and how much is being used by each backup job. So that way you can keep a certain amount of backup jobs on your media before it starts to overwrite. So for instance, if you have 100 gigabytes to, uh, of storage that you're doing and the average uh, full backup is taking 50 gigabytes, then you know it's only going to last a couple of days of two full uh, backups. However, if you do one full backup a month and the rest incremental backups, then you might get a whole month of backups out of your uh, 100 gigabytes of drive. So that's why I say by, by pre-planning. The rest of this I actually leave uh, fairly much the way it is. And when we're done, just go ahead and click OK. Now we can go ahead and create a job, and by default, it will use this storage. If you add additional storage devices, you can tell it to use specific storage, or you can create a storage pool, which we'll do in an upcoming video, where it pulls available space from any drive that is available in the pool. So that's how we configure disk-based storage in our Backup Exec 20.1.